Good evening, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'm so glad each of you are here to another one of our District 6 uh, listening circles. Today's conversation will be on water. Uh, I'm Councilmember Jared Williams. It is extremely an honor to be able to uh, represent the great district of District 6, the district that I grew up in and many of you are raising families and have raised families in. Um, so again, it's just indeed an honor to be able to have this conversation with each of you. Um, I'm going to give a few announcements before I hand it over for the reason why we're all here. Um, so there is a gentleman in the back. He is here um, handing out information, uh, nonpartisan information about the upcoming fourth ICD bond election. Um, the polls are now open for that bond election. Um, and so if you need any information about um, what's on the bond, there is information back there. If you need updating your voter registration or anything like that, um, he can help you. So um, thank you so much for being here. Um, also, um, I think I may have lost, oh, to my folks who are watching online, and for you, those of you in the room, this uh, conversation, the entire thing will be recorded. Um, we will be sending uh, that out on our social media. Um, it's at, um, our social media is at Jared Williams TX, um, and that's our city council page, so a lot of updates will go out there. Um, speaking of updates, um, we also have Mr. Kendall Locke, who's my district director um, for District 6. Um, if y'all are not receiving updates, and same for the folks who are watching this online, um, if you aren't receiving updates, please um, share your information with Mr. Kendall Locke. We'll make sure that we're getting you on our regular updates um, from the district and from the city. Um, with that being said, again, I'm super excited um, that y'all are here. Tonight's conversation, again, is um, on all things related to water. Um, and the purpose of our listening circles is really to be able to connect you, the residents of uh, Forward District 6, to um, the folks who can help talk through some of the issues um, and ideas that you have about um, specific issues. Um, and so again, tonight's conversation is very focused on water. And so we have um, our City of Fort Worth team um, that does all things related to water. Um, and so please feel free. I know some of my friends here have folders, so don't worry, we'll be able to talk through those as well. Um, I will be handing it off to uh, Sandy. Uh, she is um, another one of our teammates with the City of Fort Worth, and she'll be able to introduce the team. Um, the team will be giving presentations, and also um, we'll be looking for you to sh lift up um, questions, ideas, um, and even concerns that you have. Um, without any further ado, I'll hand it off to Sandy, and thank you all again. Thank you, Jared. You have influential friends because they approached us right away when they came into the gymnasium and said, who do we complain to? And he didn't use the word complain. Um, good evening. My name is Sandy Baker. I'm in communications with the water utility. I've been with uh, the utility a little over three and a half years, uh, mainly responsible for the My H2O program, which is the um, new water meters and customer portal. Um, I'm going to introduce our staff here tonight. Is our water director, Chris Harder. He's gonna speak in a few minutes about the, um, and here comes John Kasevich, <laughs> about, with some maps about the cast iron replacement program. Um, I know you're all aware of that because of the winter storm. We have Kara Sherrar, who is our deputy water director. Jerry Presley, who is an assistant water director for customer care. And he is gonna talk and lead our discussion on the My H2O program. Next, we have Marty Barker, who is our AMI administrator. AMI stands for Advanced Metering Infrastructure, which is the new water meters. And uh, Jesus DeLuna, who is a supervisor in meter services, he did bring a new water meter with him to, uh, to demonstrate if you guys have any questions about that. So, and I, if we have time, will lead um, a little bit of a, a presentation on the new customer portal. So we'll get started with Chris. All right, thank you, Sandy. Um, I'll say I'm, I'm familiar with this, this venue here. Uh, I've worked for the water uh, department for 20 years now, and my first public meeting uh, when I got here was in this location, and this was when we were doing smoke testing, neighborhood smoke testing. And you know, that's very, um, it concerns people when they see smoke potentially coming out of their house. So this, this, uh, this auditorium was pretty much filled when we had uh, neighborhood smoke testing going on. So I, I wanted to a little bit talk about, about some of the things that we have going on more um, regionally uh, as far as our utility, uh, but also things that affect this district. And so, you know, 
we suffered that uh, terrible winter storm back in February. Uh, that basically allowed us to kind of reprioritize some of the investments that we were going to be making. We had planned all along to be uh, uh, funding cast iron pipe replacement at a pretty high level, but that even more focused our efforts on that. And so as far as uh, things that are going on within the district in response to the winter storm, there's going to be accelerated amount of cast iron pipe replacement. There's also uh, investment in some of the backup power supplies. And uh, just if you look at just down this, this area, you see our Alta Mesa pump station. That pump station is to, uh, planned to have a, a backup generator installed. And hopefully that can be done in the next uh, year, year and a half. Uh, as far as uh, this project that we're here to talk about, the My uh, H2O project, it's a complete replacement of all of our meters, about 270,000 of them. We're now about 235,000 meters replaced. Uh, but prior to actually doing the meter replacements, what we did is we actually inventoried all of our existing meters. And as part of that inventory process, we actually looked to see what the uh, service line material was. And if, if you've heard the, the name Flint, Michigan before, you know that removing lead from water systems is a high priority, both for the federal government, but also for utilities in general. So as part of that inventory program, we were able to identify public lead services. And so to date, we've identified a, a little bit over 1,800 of those services. And thankfully, we're getting to the end of our uh, replacement program, which started about in 2016. So we, we think that we have about 100 services left to, to be replaced. All of those are under contract. And I will tell you that with a lot of these, uh, these lead service replacement projects, there's also cast iron pipe uh, replacement at the same time. So a little bit more. Okay. So there's been a lot of synergy between the cast iron pipe replacement and then the lead service uh, replacement as part of these programs. Uh, as far as other projects, uh, you know, we are continuing to grow. So uh, especially to the south of here, you know that we had the Tarleton uh, School came in, which in, in, uh, involved significant uh, capital investment. And really what we have is we have a program that's going to be uh, uh, increasing our, our sewer capacity really all the way from the Tarleton area in, in the Bendrook watershed all the way down to our Village Creek plant. So a significant investment in that uh, capital infrastructure. Uh, with that, that's kind of a high level uh, overview of kind of what we have going on as far as infrastructure work, especially in this district. Like I say, most of the growth is, related, is down further to the south. So a lot of the uh, investment you see through here is infill, and uh, capital uh, infrastructure replacement, which you know we are funding at a much higher level. So, who's speaking next? Okay. So, and and John Kasevich is one of our uh, engineers in our infrastructure section. He can speak briefly, but I know he has a lot of detailed information. So it may be one of those things that, without being able to show a map, it may be something that if you are interested in that you come and talk to him after the, uh, after the meeting. Like Chris said, we'll go pretty quick here. This is just kind of an update of uh, pro projects that we have proposed for design and construction here over the next couple of years. And this is uh, basically the north edge boundary of uh, your District 6 here at 820. And, uh, you know, most of these here are kind of clustered around around the 820 area. Most of the cast iron pipe that Chris mentioned earlier here in District 6 is uh, basically north of Alta Mesa, north of Alta Mesa and south of uh, 820. So that's pretty much the area that we're focusing as far as main replacements go there. And uh, like I said, we've got individual maps here and uh, basically some street lists for you guys to take a look at. If there's anything specific that uh, you know you have uh, questions on or whatever, if it's you know related to the water department or the streets, you can you know let me know. Yes. Where are we right now at the, at the high school? Do what? Where are we right now? At the high school. You mean? Uh, 
Oh, from the man? Okay. So basically, so basically this is Alta Mesa here. All right. So this is the 820 or uh, 20s up here. All right. And so this uh, basically this uh, boundary here, this is uh, Wedge or uh, Wedgewood Trail Lake area here. All right. Woodway here runs north south. Yeah. 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 So so basically, yeah, this is your Welch right here. So that yeah, you're basically here in relation to that. So basically, a lot of your cast iron here uh, pipe is 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 from this from Alta Mesa here going going north to uh, A20. So, so yes. Little green. Okay, so this basically what we did was like these these are basically planned projects So th this is just a general area that we circled that we're looking at uh, replacing, you know water and sanitary sewer basically Walton Wren Yeah, yeah, it's 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 on there, but yeah Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, but we've we've got individual maps and and um, uh, list, you know, that kind of show you the street limits from it too. And you know, we do have a, a comprehensive plan meeting coming up. We can put together some some good exhibits for you, Councilman, uh, uh, so that we can we, that you can share them. But what we'll do is we'll put together district specific uh, investment maps for you. And I'll just say, uh, you know, if if you have questions about your water bill specifically, oh, yeah. our uh, our staff is happy to like check into those individual uh, accounts and we can go and do the investigation and get back with you tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, I know Jerry's up next. I do want to say one thing about the AMI program and that is that is it is a um, part of the actual state water plan. So why would an AMI project be part of the state water plan you may ask? And that is it's all about stewardship of water supply whether it's on the utility side or on the customer side. By having an AMI program, what it allows is you, the customer, to have your usage information in an hourly increments. Right now, you only receive it, uh, a usage number once per month. With a, an AMI program, you actually have hourly data. So you can use that to evaluate your water usage and your usage profile. So we think it's very, very helpful to not only our customers, but also to our utility. And what we're going to be using the data for is we're going to be looking at all of our water usage across our system. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, because I mean, you want to be able to use the data. Exactly. Yeah. So. Yeah, so I look at it like this is a stewardship issue for the utility, but also it gives the, you the tools to be a steward on your end on the water use. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Jerry. Well, thank you, Chris, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jerry Presley. I've, I've been with the Water Department 24 years, <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, I'd, I'd like to say that uh, uh, I, my hair was a lot uh, fuller uh, back back when I started. So working for the water department is dangerous to your hair. So, but, uh, but others over there, uh, you, know, you know, disprove the my thesis. <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm a scientist by trade. Uh, I've had to learn the business of water uh, in in recent years. Uh, and one of the uh, my, my backgrounds biology and chemistry and and the like. And so um, when I when I approach what some of our customers' questions, I really want to help you understand and. Uh, uh, what's going on uh, from from really the t a technical level, but it, you know, it, it, so that makes sense to you. Um, so, a uh, little bit uh, about the water department, the utility in general, and that I've learned uh, as uh, as I've come to know the business, and that is we're an enterprise fund, and that means that we're not supported by taxes. Uh, we uh, our our rate our our, our cost of service. Uh, is uh, generated by uh, it's it's what really sets our rates. So whatever it costs us to buy raw water, you know, treat it, uh, distribute it, uh, meter it, uh, and all of those kinds of things, that really kind of sets what uh, our rates are. So we recover uh, those costs uh, through through our rate structure and through billing. 
uh, meters are an important part of, of uh, equitably uh, assessing those uh, uh, costs to uh, customers that use our, our services. Um, we uh, went through a competitiveness assessment survey I mean, a study uh, in about 2010. And really what happened, the city was looking at whether it made more sense to, um, for us to continue operating as a government uh, utility, government, uh, public owned treatment work, or whether it made more sense to uh, subcontract us out or consign us out to a private uh, uh, operation. And one of the things that study determined was that there was a, we were, we were highly competitive, uh, that we're really good at uh, what we do. Uh, there wasn't enough money on the profit side for the, for the private entities to make money without, uh, without affecting your rates pretty considerably. So we felt good about that study. But one of the things that came out of that study uh, was, was a, an unsolicited uh, um, uh, recommendation that we look at advanced metering infrastructure as a mechanism, a means, uh, to, uh, to ensure that we're being uh, good stewards of our resources, that we are doing our part to help manage and make sure the water is affordable into the future, that sort of thing. So um, the, our I, current AMI program uh, is, uh, is something we've, you, our customers have been exposed to recently, but it's been something that's been underway for almost a decade. So <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, we, we did, we done, there's been a lot of studying. Uh, one of the things that we re really looked at carefully is the kind of meter that we wanted to install. Uh, we did some tremendous research in, in selecting the meter type uh, and the meter manufacturer, wanting to go with a, 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 world, uh, rec a worldwide recognized leader in metering technology. Uh, that's how we selected uh, census. Uh, and then we also wanted to make sure we selected the right metering uh, type of technology. There are different ways of metering uh, water, uh, turbines and, 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 and that sort of thing. We, we selected a technology called uh, positive displacement. Uh, it's, a, it's an oscillating piston positive displacement uh, meter. And what that means is um, in order to, for that, to, to really register that water, water goes into the piston, fills it up, and, and actually causes it to rotate and then discharges. So uh, it, one of the really neat things about that is it's really not possible to over-register the water. I know that a lot of our customers disagree. <laughs> I've heard about them. <laughs> so, um, but uh, so, so we, we, really, we really went into this making, making sure that we selected the right meters, the right technology, the right partner uh, to get our program uh, really launched. And uh, we, we as a city and, and under, under Chris's leadership and, and uh, Kara's leadership, we, we operate uh, as, as best we can like, like a business out in, in the private world. We want to we wanna make sure that we're being good stewards of our resources. We want to make sure that our, our products are, are at the highest quality. We want to make sure that we're... Uh, we're producing, uh, uh, keeping our rates affordable. You know, that, that's that's our objective. We want, and we want, we really uh, you know, care about our customers. We want to be transparent. We want you to feel confident in the services we're providing. So, um, advanced metering infrastructure uh, is is um, as Chris was alluding to earlier, a, a best management practice uh, through, uh, recommended by the uh, te uh, Texas Water Development Board as a means of, of not only conservation but equitability in, in, in metering and also uh, uh, ensuring affordability. So it's, it's, it's really uh, a, a tremendous value in doing that. And uh, one, one of the, the easiest um, to, to observe impacts is uh, uh, really uh, not, not uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, our, our decision to move forward with advanced metering infrastructure with MyH2O uh, was, uh, is, is that it's really a fundamental a business transformation for us as a utility. It's changing the way we do business, and, and, and we'll get, kind of get to a little bit of that a little bit later, but one of the most visible means of, of, of seeing that is in our remote reading technology that we've deployed. So before AMI, we actually had a contract with, with, a, with a vendor that went out and manually read meters, uh, and then they had to you know, punch those, meter, those readings into a handheld device, bring that back and have it uploaded into a computer system. Uh, but it was, it was a manual process and it was um, the potential for um, misreads and the like was there. Uh, with, with AMI uh, and, and remote reading technology, uh, we are able to get those readings um, you know, hourly instead of once a month. Uh, but and then also remotely uh, uh, through our uh, a transmitter that's a part of your meter installation that uh, uh, transmits through a, a uh, remote uh, network interface through through a um, uh, series of radio towers that then transmits it into our meter data management system. Uh, so again, we're able to 
uh, uh, observe meter readings on an hourly basis. And, and uh, so that, that allows us to do a lot of things. Uh, you, you, we, before, we only had, uh, your bill was taking the current month minus the, uh, uh, the last month, and that was the, the amount of water that you assessed for billing. All, uh, oftentimes, our customers would question those bills, and uh, we, we've actually done some studies that looked at uh, high bill complaints before AMI and high uh, uh, meter installs and high, and, and high bill complaints after AMI. And it's interesting that prior to AMI, about 5% of our customers would complain, and within a given year, over, in, particularly in the summer months when people are using more water, um, those customers that have the advanced metering infrastructure that the new meters installed, uh, that, that number drops literally to 2%. Uh, it's a vocal 2%. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, and honestly, not everyone uh, calls, but uh, when, when your meter uh, uh, bills uh, go up, it gets, gets customers' attention. In some cases, those meter readings jumped pretty considerably. And uh, just briefly, uh, one of the things that we discovered in the process of exchanging meters uh, is that we had a class of meters uh, that under-registered significantly uh, more than we anticipated. Uh, actually, uh, they, they stopped re re registering when uh, under high flow conditions, such as when you would turn on an irrigation system the meters, would, the meters would register fine at normal use, you know, normal day-to-day -day use, but the second, you know, the second a customer turned on an irrigation system, they stopped registering. So a number of our customers that have irrigation systems, um, honestly, we're getting free water for a long time. So the new meters that have been installed, um, you know, uh, catch that, right? So and and so when we, we a lot of our customers, you know, again, we want to be transparent. We try to help uh, customers understand what's going on. So we we've done things like put a calculator on on the website that helps customers really understand how much water their irrigation systems are using. So one of the things that I, you know, again, my scientific nerdy brain goes, uh, goes and looks at is how much water does an irrigation system use? And what we, uh, by design, most irrigators will uh, design their systems to, work, to use 15 gallons a minute. Uh, and, and so every minute your irrigation system is running, it's using 15 gallons of water. So when you start thinking about how, you know, most customers are gonna be using their irrigation systems three hours a day, two days a week, just doing the math there, you end up with about 16 CCF of water. That's you know, uh, about 20,000 gallons of water that most irrigation systems are, being, are using. So if you've been a customer that's had an irrigation system and your summer uh, water bills were in the four or five CCF per month range, um, that, that, you know, just doing the math, you can, you can see where you weren't being charged for that irrigation water. So again, we wanted to help explain it, but, but one of the neat things about AMI, and to a question that, that I heard earlier, uh, is how, how do you get, a, get your hands on that data? Uh, the, the, current, the data as it currently exists goes through uh, from your meter into our uh, uh, meter data management system and into a, a database where we can actually track and monitor and, and share the data. Right now, it's, it's sort of on a case-by-case -case basis. If you have a question, we're glad to pull that up for you, share it with you. So right now, it's email, of probably a PDF, and we can produce some graphs and some uh, nice uh, uh, reports for you. Uh, when, and when fully deployed within our uh, portal that I think we're hoping, if I don't keep talking all night, uh, that Sandy will have an opportunity to uh, share with you what the portal will look like. The portal will uh, allow you to see that, uh, that usage on a near real-time basis. So basically, uh, every six hours that meter will communicate with our system and upload that data. Uh, once a day-ish, we'll be uploading that into the, our customer portal. So about a day behind probably is what, what, what you'll be looking at, the, the, able to see the data. You'll be able to set up alerts uh, uh, to, what, to let you know if you've got a leak or you can kind of set up a water budget if you want to use a certain amount of water and have an alert sent to you by your preferred method of communication. Uh, you'll be able to do that. And so whether that's email or text or, or um, that sort of thing, you'll be able to set up those as... as as preferences in your in your account, so um, we're 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 uh, getting close to our portal launch, and so I know a lot of you will be looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, so the the data is, is compel compelling, though. Uh, now, one of the things that that the data can tell us is how much water you use in a given hour. It doesn't really tell us how you're using the water, just that the water is being used. And and uh, we've we've over time we've sort of learned to recognize patterns. Uh, irrigation system usage has a pattern. If somebody's using it appropriately, you know, twice a uh, twice a week, uh, and uh, you know, you know, three to you know, three hours a day, you can you can see those patterns. You can see what time of day they're running, how much water was used during that hour. 
Uh, and, and one of the things that I think is really neat that we've been able to, to do in advance of the portal launch uh, is we can see when there's a leak, or you know, what, we, what we call continuous use. Uh, is so when water is being used at a rate, we, the, the parameters we've set on our current algorithm is such that um, if we have water being used continuously at a rate of about one cubic feet per, per cubic foot per hour for more than 72 hours, we create it, it's, it's pretty, it gets uh, funneled to us in a report. We're actually mailing customers uh, a, a, an advisory just saying, hey, you know, we're, we're, we've, we've observed this uh, situation in your water consumption. You might want to take a, you know, evaluate whether or not you have a leak. And, and on it, we were seeing about 1.5, almost 2% at times of our customers at any given time have a leak. And that's significant. I mean, so uh, typically when, when we get a high bill complaint, we see one of three situations as we evaluate what's going on. We see the potential for continuous use or leak. Uh, we see irrigation use or a combination of the two. <laughs> uh, those are the primary things that we see when we're talking with customers about, about high bills. Um, so a leak uh, is something is, and, and, and oftentimes when what, uh, customers, uh, they've had their plumbers out, they don't see a leak, they've, they've checked things out. But uh, one of the, uh, what we often tell our customers is a, a leaking, a, a toilet, a running toilet, a flapper valve that's not sealing well or a, or a, uh, a uh, float that's not uh, properly uh, seating, uh, those can use a quarter of a gallon a minute up to a gallon a minute. And when you look at 1,440 minutes a day, a quarter gallon a minute a day is over 300 gallons times 30 days. You're looking at uh, a lot of water, 9,000, 10,000 gallons a, a month just on a, on a small toilet leak. If you've got a gallon a minute leak, you're looking at 43,000 gallons uh, that, can be, that, that, can go, that can be used. And we see that a lot. Uh, and so, so one of the things that um, came out of our customer concerns uh, last year, uh, early, early in the deployment process, was um, you know, we, we didn't know, and, and, and so we, we actually developed a, a one-time after meter exchange credit for customers. Uh, so it's, it allows you, our customer, to get used to the sort of new reality of uh, what the impact is of irrigation uh, usage on your water bill. Uh, we've, now, we've in, traditionally had two other uh, billing adjustment credits that were uh, made available. One of those is an undefined high use or a... Um, uh, leak, adjust, leak repair adjustments. So we've had those kind of adjustments available to customers in the years past. Uh, and, and, and really those were intended because we only were getting one meter reading a month uh, and you know, customers might not be aware of the fact that they had a leak until you know, they get their water bill. And then it's, uh, you know, you might, it might even go, go run the course of, of two months that, before you really catch on that you had that leak. So we want to, be, want to give our customers the option to, uh, to make those repairs and, and kind of sort of split that cost uh, difference with you a little bit. So those leaks, those adjustments are available. The, the, and the one time after meter exchange adjustment, something we did wanted to do to sort of soften the blow of the new meters. But again, we, you know, making data available, helping you understand your water consumption is, is what we want to be about. Um, again, it's, it's um, what we don't want and it related to the affordability aspect of water is customers that are using a lot of water, uh, their, their bill being subsidized by customers that uh, or not. So you want, we want to be fair, equitable uh, in, in our solution and, and the meters, these meter replacements allow us to do that. So um, a lot of information thrown at you pretty quick and I, I, I think I'm pretty close to being done before we start to answer questions. Uh, but just uh, the AMI program, I, I, I mentioned that it was uh, a fundamental business transformation. So there's the, the meter replacement aspect of it, uh, the data uh, collection and data mining that we can do. Uh, that the, uh, our, it's affecting our ability and, and, and uh, influencing our ability to water, monitor water loss. Uh, so water loss is um, something that we have to report to the state. It's the amount of water we produce versus the amount of water for which we collect uh, uh, payment revenue. Uh, and so we've been pretty negative. Um, that number's been pretty highly negative. So we're under collecting uh, on the basis of the amount of water we uh, produce. Uh, so a lot, a lot of customers that were complaining uh, that your uh, these new meters are going to make you know, you know, <laughs> uh, they're, they're over registering. Well, even with the new meter replacement, there's still a certain amount of water loss. We're not over collecting. We're not collecting more money for water than that which we're producing, and it's been pretty significant. So the metering, the technology that we're able to introduce, allows us to uh, affect our water loss and uh, our, our, our um, uh, that, that and, and the efficiency of uh, and op it allows us to optimize our, our organization. So that we're, uh, along many different facets. Um, we're developing a data lake uh, that will help us to uh, uh, 
uh, inform our, our engineering sections, our other other parts of the department, uh, in, in terms of uh, making data-driven decisions. I mean, that's that's what we're about. And it's, it's just, I mean, there's so much more to my H2O that I'd love to take time to talk about, but I don't even have a clue as to what time it is. But um, Kara, uh, Chris, either anything y'all would want to mention that I haven't? That uh, let's get to the demos. Um, so, so maybe two quick questions, and then we'll let Marty show you some things, and we'll take some more questions at that point. Yes, ma'am. So great question. I'm not an engineer. I am a scientist, and I've got an engineer over here. But let me try just real quick. So um, uh, the pressure in the system is is there to make sure that we can get water to all the parts of the distribution system where we need it. Your proximity to the either pump station or to the towers means that your your pressure is going to be a little higher. The plumbing code uh, requires that if your pressure at the meter is greater, is 80 psi or greater, it's your responsibility, customer, to install a uh, pressure reducing valve. Uh, to lower that pressure to below 80 psi. So uh, you know, again, we're, we're trying to meet system-wide demands uh, uh, with a with a common distribution system. That means that there are going to be some customers with higher pressure, and there are zones where the customer is going to have lower pressure. We have we have a certain a minimum level at which we are uh, that we have to operate at, uh, and then we have a, uh, there's a, a maximum. <laughs> but uh, generally, that that maximum is going to be going to be set by the tower levels and or the pump uh, pumps that are, that are running. Again, um, we have some areas that have 120 psi is kind of the highest I've seen. Uh, but um, again, if it's higher than 80, customers are required to have and maintain a pressure-reducing valve at on your side of the meter. Yes, ma'am. So, so. Um, Try to make a point, and that is uh, the, the the meter and the meter box uh, really is for the city. Uh, the pressure reducing valves should not be installed in the meter box. There, that, that's private plumbing, and needs to be installed outside the meter box. Yeah, along with that pressure reducing valve, customers should have, by plumbing code, uh, a a separate shutoff valve to be able to manage the water at your at your pro, at your premises. Uh, a lot of customers have them, don't know the, where they are. They, you know, the houses have been there for a lot of years. They've been covered up with dirt, or they're in the flower beds, and people just can't find them. But we, we, we really don't want you in the meter box. Uh, we, we accept and understand, and, and, and if you in an emergency situation, you've got to use that, that curb stop to shut off your water. Uh, but that's not, that's not what it's for, and, and, and by, by city code, you shouldn't be in that box. Uh, so um, if you have questions about your pressure, um, you know, we can we can tell you what the ambient pressure is in your area, uh, but at your specific house, um, really, it's going to be a private plumber that's going to need to assess that for you. Okay. And I got one. Yes, sir. On the pressure of the system, I've been studying at the client camp. Can you provide for us a map of your pressure zones in this area and show us which ones are low pressure? Because I haven't found low pressure in such an area. I have found several that are low. We have a lot of cast iron pipes here in this neighborhood. The excessive pressure that the city is delivering to us is destroying our roads, destroying our valves, and avoiding the warranty on a number of pieces of equipment. We have too high pressure everywhere to pressure you show us otherwise. How did I do that? Yeah, sure, we, we can do that. Uh, and if you'd like, we can give it uh, to you, Councilmember uh, Williams, and you can distribute it. But just to talk about system pressure in general. So you, I, I mentioned this pump station over here, Alta Mesa pump station, installed in the 70s. We have a, a Russum Ranch pump station installed in the 40s. There's the new McCart pump station uh, installed in 2006. Russum Ranch and Alta Mesa are the pump stations that uh, have been used historically to fill the Armstrong Ranch tank. That tank was installed in the 60s. So really the distribution pressure within this area has been pretty much the same for decades. But the distribution pressure is controlled by the elevation of the tank. So those pump stations pump up to the tank to fill up the tank. So there's some slight pressure differentials between 
if the level of the tank is high or the level of the tank is low. There's usually 35 feet of working, uh, working height within a tank. So there's minor changes depending on what the pumping rate is and also what the tank elevations are. But what we can do is we can provide a, a, a pressure contour map that will basically factor in the ground surface elevation to give you a contours of what the system pressure will be uh, in this area. All right? So, Marty, I think we're going to turn it over to you, or, or do you have anything else, Jerry? Yeah, that seems good. All right. So this is our, our, our demo of uh, some of the data and how we can utilize it. Thank you, Chris. Uh, again, my name is Marty Barker. I'm the ANMI administrator here for the city of Fort Worth. Um, I can't say that I've been with the city for 20 years because I haven't. Um, I'm fairly new to the area, but I've been in the water utility business for the past 30 years. So I've been around this a lot, and I've seen a lot, and this is actually a second AMI system that I've been involved with. So I'm just thrilled to be a part of this, and I appreciate you coming out tonight. I understand uh, things have changed for you since that new meter came in, and uh, that's, that impacts you greatly, and that's why you're here tonight. And uh, we want to be able to help you understand what this does for you, what this does as far as uh, water consumption analysis, how we can see it, how we can monitor it, and then you can make decisions based on what you see. And at the end of this, Sandy will come up and talk to you a little bit about the portal. That again is something that you'll have in your hands. It's a tool that's going to help you as you monitor your water usage. Um, again, I've been around the water utility business for 30 years, and that's why I'm excited about AMI because Again, what was mentioned earlier uh, about Jerry had mentioned with uh, readings, you get one reading one month and one the next month, and that's how much water you use. But with the AMI system, we have a tool, and you will soon have a tool that you can see your hourly consumption and see how much water you're actually using when it comes to your irrigation, when it comes to inside usage. And if you have what we call constant usage, which could potentially be a leak, that warns you of that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some slides that I have, and these are pictures, graphs, demonstrations of hourly consumption. And what I've taken is I've just randomly pulled from different customers that we have within the system that um, will show a, a typical summertime billing period. So again, our billing period is 30 days, give or take a day or so. But usually it's a 30 days worth of water usage that you get billed for. And that's what I want to demonstrate for you and show you and different um, aspects of what I want to show you is uh, patterns in usage that you'll see based on this chart that comes from irrigation systems. And I don't know how many of you here tonight have an irrigation system, but usually when you set it up, the water comes on at a certain time every day that it's programmed for a certain period of time and then shuts off. And you'll see that in this demonstration of irrigation patterns of people's water coming on at a certain time and the amount of the water that's being used. And then with that, as we go through this, I'll show you with the water meter, the new meter that's in place and that irrigation pattern or that consumption pattern that you'll see and the total consumption that was used during that time period and then compare it to the same time period last year and maybe even the year before of the consumption that was used for that homeowner with the old meter. And we'll be able to do some comparative analysis. So let me, let me open up my computer here and um, we'll take a look at these. And again, this is going to be something similar to what you'll see um, with the portal. So this is our first one, and I just want to demonstrate again, this is, and I apologize if it's a little small, a little weak, or hard to see, um, but you'll see from August the 3rd to September the 1st, and, and in this particular one, it, it does show an hourly consumption. Again, it's going to be hourly, and we bill in cubic, hundreds of cubic feet, but this graph and your portal will show consumption in single cubic feet, and or gallons as well. You can see it in gallons. But in our system, what we have, we see it in cubic feet because we're really trying to compare apples to apples of what we bill the customer and then what we see granulated down from hundreds of cubic feet down to a single cubic foot. So 
to just, re just review on that, uh, 100 cubic feet is approximately 748 gallons of water. One cubic foot is approximately 7.48 gallons of water. So for this particular customer, you can see the spikes in usage up to almost 180 cubic feet in one hour. So you can see them each time consistent and oftentimes again that's from irrigation systems because we all know that if we run our own sprinkler systems with the hose we may run it for 20 minutes one day and 45 minutes the next and forget and run it the third day and leave it on for an hour. It's just all over the place but when we have an irrigation system we can set it and it can make sure that it's consistent and this is what it shows in this particular uh, demonstration. So, uh, sometimes I can. <laughs> so let me show you the next one. Um, so here's, here's a customer, as you can see, there's multiple spikes here, which indicates uh, they're watering quite often from a sprinkler system. And what I wanted to demonstrate is, again, here's, here's their bill, the billing periods from July 14th to August the 16th, with the total consumption used of 34.2 CCF. Now this was at the new meter because the new meter was installed on the 28th of May and this is coming after. Again, this is the heart of irrigation season. We all know it's a little warm in July and in August. So water's gonna be used. But then what I wanted to show is the previous two years, same billing period, same time frame. Uh, for the August bill of, of 2020, they used 9.2 and for 2019, they used 6.4 probably didn't change anything with their irrigation system or with their yard. It's probably pretty close to the same, but it does give you a comparison of what the old meter, as Jerry spoke earlier, the old meter that was and has been. And, and I just wanted to say real briefly, in my 30 years of being in the water utility, that's all I've known is positive displacement meters. So when I came to the city of Fort Worth and I learned of the multi-jet master meter that was in place, um, it was fairly new to me and learned, again, it was more designed for residential use and not for irrigation use. So to me, positive displacement has been all that I've known and I've been around it my whole life in the water utility business. And it's proven to be a, a, a rock solid meter. It's a positive displacement, absolutely. Okay, so let me keep going because we're short on time. Um, again, I just wanted to do these, these examples of what I've found. Here's another typical residential, again, July 21st through August the 16th. Total consumption was 48.2 CCF compared to their previous two years at that same time of 6.6 .6 and 11.2. You can see the big spikes in consumption, and we all know that it's coming from irrigation. Did you try with the, the weather patterns? Because we had very rainy August, and that would account for some of the We do have a couple of systems, and one of our systems it does show a temperature pattern along with that, and it does demonstrate that, yes. But again, that's a lot of times uh, a homeowners, depending on their controller, a lot of the older controllers do have, some of them have the old rain sensors that are out there. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Newer controllers that oftentimes can come on your phone as a phone app, those take in a weather uh, pattern as well. And when weather systems come in, they shut your system off completely. And that's an amazing thing to, to be able to utilize. This particular customer, as you can see, these, they're small because there's so many of them. But look at the total consumption, 147.5 CCF. Wow, that's a lot of water. So they called and were concerned about their bill, which I understand, I would too. It's like, what's going on here? Um, so this is for July 14th through August the 12th, and they called around the time that they received their bill, which is about the middle of August. And so there's notes on their account to say, well, we've noticed you've been watering quite a bit. You might want to cut back on your watering. So we look at their consumption history for the next billing period, and what do we find? They did just that. So you can see where they really ramped it down here and then completely shut it off here. So 30 days, August 12th through September 11th, 
when the irrigation systems almost shut off, consumption is 11.3 CCF. So you can see how much irrigation can use in total water consumption. One more slide. And uh, this is one where the system, again, the beauty of the system, it picks up constant usage, potential leak. Sometimes those leaks can come in our toilets when we don't even know it and it runs down the drain and we never see it. It, it, it. We don't know it exists, but it happens and a lot of water can be used. This system gives us that ability and that's what the portal will also help you do, set up alarms for yourself. So if you have constant water usage for six, seven hours straight, then you say, wow, that's not typical. I shouldn't be using water like that on a regular basis. You'll be notified. And the beauty of that is you get notified sooner rather than later when you receive your bill. It's like, why is my bill so high? Well, I had a leak for the last 30 days. Well, here you'll be able to pick it up much sooner. So as you can see, almost over half of their billing period, they had this leak. They learned of it, got it taken care of, but their total bill usage was 46 cubic feet or 46 CCF for that billing period. And again, most of that is attributed to because they had constant usage. There are some irrigation spikes early on, but most of it's constant usage. So the next billing period after they get, or not full billing period, because it starts at October the 8th. So I just took from October the 8th up till today. And you can see they had a little bit of consumption here for some sort of irrigation. But other than that, they got that constant usage fixed. And over 13 days, not quite a billing period yet, they've only used 4.8 CCF. So you can really see what happens in usage when you have a constant leak. We don't really like to call it a leak because we don't know where water's being used. All we know that there's constant usage every hour on the hour. So again, this is just some examples of what consumption analysis looks like for different customers. Again, the, the, the most water really when it comes down to it that you use that we don't realize how much is being used is through our irrigation systems. And once we learn that, we can then modify that, make adjustments. There's better controllers out there maybe that you can look into. I have one on my phone that I do monitor my sprinkler system and it does tell me if there's a weather pattern coming and I got rain, it shuts off. I'm not using it. It tells me how much water I actually save by not having it on. So it's, there's just so much new technology out there that really helps us. And that's why I'm excited about this. That's why I like this. It gives you guys a tool to say, how can I manage my water better? I can still have a green yard, but maybe I water a little less, a little less often, a little different time of the day and I can still manage that and make it what I want it to be and yet conserve, again, as Chris talked about, this, the AMI, the mice 2 project really stems a lot from how can we be good stewards of our water? How can we promote conservation? How can we really monitor and watch that closely? And this system really does that for us and it helps us. So we have questions by all means. Yes, sir. Do you have any examples where the use is going down with the new meters? when the usage went down with new meters. Um, I don't think went down, but we have examples of where it's pretty much stayed the same. And a lot of that was when customers that didn't have outside irrigation, they really didn't see much difference. We have seen uh, those kind of comparisons with year over year where we've seen reductions in the new meters. And a lot of that is because of the way weather impacts usage. Yeah, so, so I was just gonna you know, to repeat just exactly what Kara said there. The biggest predictor in terms of the water usage is weather, right? Uh, you know, when it's hot, dry, folks just turn on their systems or use outdoor, you know, just the walking sprinklers and, and just really have no concept of how much water they're using. Uh, the the, 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 the um, uh, slide that, that Marty put up there that showed the, the, the continuous use. Uh, say, say again? Water sewage fees. Uh, rates for. No, no. Because I have a, I, I, I got an extra uh, fee on my bill every month now, and I was told that from November to April, you're monitored for usage, and that's and that's what you're charged. I got I, I got an so, extra hundred dollar fee. Gotcha. Sounds like wastewater, uh, water. Uh, so so. Um, 
we charge uh, commercial customers. Uh, their wastewater is the same. I, I'll, I'll get there. Uh, we charge wastewater based on the amount of water they use. If you, get, if you use 10 gallons of water, we're going to boil your wastewater on for 10 gallons. Residential customers, we use what's called a winter quarter average to set what your wastewater rate is. Um, so uh, we know that customers in the, in the summer months are using a lot of water in, in for, for irrigation purposes. And, and in some cases, 98% of the water used in the summer months, in most cases that have high, you know, uh, high bills, you hit with irrigation systems, 98% of the water used in summer months is, is irrigation. So we don't want you to pay an irrigation bill based on water that's going on your, I mean, uh, uh, we don't want you paying sewer bills based on how much water is going on your lawn. So what we do is we take those winter quarter months when most likely irrigation systems are turned off, and we use that period of time as a, it's a study to, to really set the rate that we're gonna be charging you for the rest of the year for, for wastewater. Every customer should be paying a wastewater charge. Uh, that, that um, if uh, and, uh, most customers are uh, uh, gonna be in the, um, 10,500 gallons, I, forget, I think it's about five, five to six CCF uh, is what your wastewater rate should be. If you're at $100 a month new on wastewater, we need to probably look at that. Uh, we all have, and I have called y'all. Okay. And, and it was a very negative conversation that I had. Yeah. AT&T busted our irrigation line, and I, had, I was dealing with that. They came in and bored. Uh, yeah, let, let's, let's, uh, let me look at that. I'll, I'll give you my card. Give me a shout. Uh, well, and, I did talk to some very few, some people that were yeah. very negative. Well, and I, I'm, I'm going to, I'll come. That's why I'm here tonight. Absolutely, you bet. Uh, we have all of our calls recorded to go in our call center. Uh, I will listen to them if they're if, when there's coaching opportunities. I want to address that. An email that says, yes, sir. Hey, uh, uh, I don't see water gushing out. Mm -hmm. They don't understand zones. Got it. Sure. Irrigation zones. And these are the call takers. Okay. Well, 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 I'll listen to those calls and we'll look for some coaching opportunities. So let's. The, the main thing is let's get your your costs fixed and then I'll, I'll certainly address the the customer concerns. Uh, but yeah, if, if if you're at $100 on your wastewater for a residential, we we need to, we need to address that, and we and we will we'll make that right for you. Um, yes, ma'am. We were told last spring we were going to have access to this agricultural portal, and we still don't. What's the? When is it really? Since it's recorded. It's a great question. I don't care. So obviously this is new technology and it's a process that incorporates numerous different systems, right? So we are incorporating our billing system data, we've got our payment processor that has to be a partner in this, so it's numerous vendors that are coordinated. So we actually kicked off this project uh, about 18 months ago and we have been working on it since then. We have gone through, um, we're in our second round of final acceptance testing. Um, but it's really critical that everything is working properly, especially because it involves customer wallets that will transfer from an old payment system to a new one. So we want to make sure that your bill is represented properly, that you're not having to reset your payment methods, that all auto pays transfer correctly. So that testing period is really critical. So we have a weekly call with our vendor. Um, everything has been configured. It is testing and then correcting any, any issues that arise from that testing at this stage. No, we're not as correcting as much because of that because in the portal in the spring so we can see the monitoring. You guys can see it, but we can't. And when I ask why can't I get that report, if you can see it, why can't I? Well, I can send this one. It's like, right, because the portal's not running yet. And you send me my user's report for the week. Right, so the idea is that the portal is the tool that is available to all of our customers to see their data. And yes, the intent was to have that to you in late spring. When we went through that first round of user acceptance testing, it wasn't ready to go. And so we have had to go back and work with our vendors and ensure that it is um, where it needs to be to give you the data that you need and the accuracy and protection of payments. So we can certainly work with specific customers if you've got some, some questions, again, if you want to look at your data monthly or, um, but we're, we are very close, but you know, it's hard to put in a date on it because again, we, we want to make sure that we can meet that date and that our vendor is providing everything we need. So how are you continuing to communicate what that date is going to be? Because that's, a, that's one of the reasons we came to was to, because we're not getting the transparency from the city of Fort Worth. 
surprised at what that new schedule is going to be? So we really need to have a firm schedule in order to be able to tell you that. So what we have done is we've prepared all the marketing materials. They're ready to go. We have um, videos on how to use the system, how to access it, those kinds of things. So everything is ready to go. Once we can confirm that the data is accurate and that what the customer sees, and Sandy's going to walk through what it, what it will look like, um, that's what triggers the notifications to our customers. And Sandy, you can speak to that a little bit more in terms of, of what that rollout looks like. So there is a full rollout to educate our customers and let you know it's available. Typically, a, communication, a project of this size would include a communication plan that if there are hiccups or um, contingency plans that allow communication to the impacted parties. That's really what we're looking for. Right, and Sandy, you might want to speak to that a little bit, but we do have everything ready to go. We just don't want to send anything out in terms of providing a date if we're not 100% sure that we're comfortable releasing it. So let's let Sandy speak to the overall communications plan and uh, share a little bit about the portal. Trust me, we are going to make a huge splash, pun intended, <laughs> when, when this portal is, you'll get mailings, it'll be all over social media, it'll be bill inserts, it will be ads, you'll know it. Um, <laughs> What I'm showing you is um, I have been part of the testing of the portal, and this was the account that they gave me uh, to do the testing on it, so that's what you are seeing, a test account. And this is the main page. You can see um, you'll be able to pay the bill. There's some redundancy. If you don't want to register and get into the portal itself to have it to operate it, you can just go to this web page and you'll be able to pay it. Um, we have our a lot of... Um, FAQs, our terms of services there, and our private policy. So I'm going to sign on. And we'll go to this page, and we'll have tabs across the front. This is the home page on this. Please ignore this guy's name and address. It's not real anyway. But um, he, he doesn't have any an account due at this time. But um, you can several places where you can go. You can view your bill from here. So I'm just showing you some of the features. But this, your bill will show up on here like this, okay? And I'll get to that. Uh, you'll have your account where you have all your account information. You, on, you'll have a, uh, to the left on the side going down your payment, your, um, all your settings and stuff, your notification preferences that you can set. You'll go here to set your notification preferences, how you want to be contacted and I'll show you where you can set up the alert as well. There's billing. I'm just kind of going from tab to tab. You'll be able to link several accounts. Like if you have a couple different accounts, you won't have to go to a different portal page that you'll be able to pay all your bills if you have several different water accounts, like if you have rental houses and you pay or you pay for an elderly parent. Um, you can watch their bills and pay their bills for them if you're a caretaker. You'll be able to manage all that. Um, my test account, unfortunately, doesn't have the hourly showing. They took that one away from me. But this is what it will look like. Um, this is on a monthly basis. There will be a um, tab here that will show hourly. Um, and this is one of the things Kara was talking about. We want it perfect. We're, we're supposed to have the, uh, the weather uh, temperatures and stuff that will go on top of this graph too that she was referring to. Um, and this is where you'll set your usage alerts. If you don't want your bill to go over a certain amount, you'll be able to set your bill amounts and that we will send you an alert when um, you're getting close to that amount. We will also do that for your usage. If you only want to, why are you laughing? Well, then, no, we don't turn it off. You're turning it off. Um, you can set your usage amounts, that how much you want to use that month. Like, say you don't want to get, we have some customers who um, operate on very little water, and they don't want to go over a certain amount every month. And they'll be able to set that, and we'll send them an alert when we're, they're getting close to that amount. So what do you just put drinking water for the last four days of the month? No, that's up to you how you want to manage. This is a conservation, part of a conservation program. 
Well, I didn't want to cut myself off entirely for the last four days of the month. How would I reduce the consumption? Just remember. You would have to go back and look at your usage to see how you're using the water. You know, maybe maybe your irrigation system switched to a different setting and you're not realizing it's going off one night when you th thought you had turned it off for that night. Um, that will show up on the hourly. You'll be able to go in and say, why I don't have that set for Wednesday night is my water running. Um, you know, we do have some cases where people steal water from their neighbors. Um, yeah. So you'll be able to see, like in the middle of the night, um, and it's just a matter of looking at how you use your water. So, that's up to you. We're, we can't tell you how to use your water. Yeah. You know, maybe to combine more clothes in one load of wash instead of doing three loads of wash. I think it'll be flat Things off. like that. We, we will have, not in this uh, rollout, because we do want to get it out, um, we will have conservation tips. We will have conservation, you know, information about our conservation programs that you will be able to access on the portal. Thank you. You'll be able to communicate with us and get that kind of information, yes. Um, this is just a real high. I still yeah, I know. I was just saying this is just a real, because I know we're running out of time, right, Jared? Yeah, I'm sorry. What's your question? Okay, my, my life does now revolve around the Fort Worth Water Department. So, and I support the U.S. Post Office. Can I get a monthly bill, period, in the mail? Yeah, you still get a mail. Good. Yeah, you can choose to go paperless, but if you still want the bill, you will still get the bill. I want paperless. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm the same way. Yeah. <laughs> I would just like to say that just over the last few days I've been dealing with the last three months being very high. I think I'm a victim of the irrigation not registered previously to this. But one thing I do want to say is every representative I spoke with at the Water Department has done an exceptional job. And I want to commend that department. Thank you. All right, let's give it up for our water team. They really answered a lot of questions today. So, so the, the, the giveaways in the chairs are yours. If you see an extra one in the chair, give it to a kid that you know in the neighborhood. I'm sure they would really love it. Um, Kendall and I have taken a lot of notes also on the issues that y'all have raised. We've heard about water pressure. We've heard about uh, wastewater. Um, and as many of y'all were interested in the lead pipe replacement program as well. So um, we are also doing our due diligence to try to address some of your concerns from a council level um, where possible. Um, also, our water department uh, team will still be here after uh, today's conversation. Um, so if you would like to connect with them about some more specific issues related to, um, you know, your residents, um, they'll certainly be here to exchange contact information so that y'all can connect later on. Yes, sir. Are we allowed to ask the engineers a couple of technical questions? Yes, sir. They'll be staying here after the event, so you can ask them some technical um, questions as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, definitely thank you all again for coming out. Um, like I said, these listening circles are really designed so that we can connect you all in the neighborhood directly with the people who, who can help you with some of the issues that you're facing today. Um, it's about water. Um, we'll have another listening circle here in a couple weeks. Um, that'll be on transportation and public works. Um, Kendall, am I correct in that that um, um, listening circle will be at Hallmark uh, Baptist Church? So it'll be on Thursday, November 4th from 6 to 7 p.m. at Hallmark Baptist Church. Um, that'll be on, um, um, that conversation will be in partnership with the Transportation and Public Works Department. Um, we'll be talking about um, speeding, um, we'll be talking about traffic infrastructure, um, and all things related to that. Uh, we'll also be talking about some of the infrastructure improvements that we're making um, all throughout the district. And so 
Um, if you've had issues or if you have ideas with that topic, please come out um, to that listening circle as well. Again, listening circles are designed to connect you all directly with the experts in the city of Fort Worth um, that can help you solve some of the issues that you and your neighbor are facing. So um, the more that you can come out to our listening circles, the better we can get at solving the issues that the neighborhoods are facing. Um, again, thank you all so much for attending tonight. Um, I hope that um, we were able to answer many of your questions, and if we weren't, please connect with us after. I will be sticking around with uh, my district director, Kendall Locke, and we'll also share our information with you as well. Um, for those of you who are on social media, please follow our council page. It's at Jared Williams TX. Um, that's where we give um, a lot of updates um, about these type of events. Um, also, please feel free to share your information with us. I think there's a sign-in sheet flowing around. We also have email updates, and we do um, robo calls, so you can hear my voice every now and then, personally inviting you to events like this. So again, thank y'all, and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Thank y'all, take care.